Hi there and welcome to your modern shaman Maria Maria in Rainbowland here with the weekly heartful forecast or the five signs of the week for the week that starts at the 18th of September and ends at the 26th from Tuesday till Wednesday the following week. First I want to say this before we go on with the five signs of the week that um, we have to remember again that the whole summer and still we are going through big transformational phases. If you are a light worker and you are one of the forerunners that really wants to stand in the foreground of helping people move forward on the ascendance level on this pl planet where we change the way we are when we are together with other people, when where we alter our consciousness and open our hearts even more. If you're one of the forerunners, then you have to remember that the as I said it many times before, but I want to repeat it also if you're new to the channel, that um, a space between where you change who you used to be and you go into the new f stage of the person your higher self or your soul really wants to go um, can be a hard process. So try not to panic if you feel like you're scared of what's coming and you feel like you cannot trust people, you cannot... Whenever you're going through a breakdown, it means you're breaking through something. And there's a space between the breakthrough and the actual ascension where you reach a new level of consciousness, a new way of being. And that space, especially if you're one of the forerunners, you know, uh, if you're one of the Aryan types that, that are here to inspire others in particular, um, then probably more or less everything in your life is changing right now. So don't be afraid, just have trust the process and keep focusing upon the dreams and the goals that you know you're heading towards. Then it shall surely manifest little by little. If you let go of the details, but just let it come in whatever way the universe wants to present it to you. If you're not one of the forerunners, but some, some one of the follower, the, the, the people that takes uh, some of the hard work of actually leading other people towards enlightenment then of course something is also changing in your life as well right now and it's the same for you guys try to stay in a state of pro trust in the process so the first sign of the week is that the sun and mercury are moving signs and we have the equinox so sign number one we are shifting from the virgo energy into the libra energy so we've had a, a long time of deep healing healing crisis perhaps even um, all that has been going on during the summer communications has been made you've talked to people about it you have thought about it you have arranged it inside of your system your body you've integrated different health systems that will help you move forward in the right way with the, with the rhythms of your of your body with the health the fitness diets um, sleeping patterns you've been organizing things so that you can move along and now it's time to actually go out of the earth energy where you've been manifesting certain things physically and then start moving into where you start integrating it in your conversations with other people in all, on all levels of relationships. Of course, this also depends on which sign you are, um, but we always have the collective level and moving from Virgo into Libra always shifts the focus from health day-to-day -day routines, work things, work issues, to relationships in general. And of course this can mean a lot of things because we have relationships with a lot of different people. So it's time now to open up towards the communication and know that whenever the Sun and Mercury are conjunct or close to each other, the Sun can burn the tongue of the people who are talking. So be aware of you not being too sharp when you're in a communication with other people. So watch out for your tongue, that it doesn't burn anyone. Or so if someone actually chooses to snap at you or a little too quick to, to run you over verbally, um, know that it's because the sun is conjunct Mercury. 
uh, during the week. On the 22nd, Mercury passes in, and on the 23rd, into Libra, uh, the Sun will go into Libra. So it's around these days, a little before, a little after, one to two days before and after, that this is potent. And we have the equinox as well, um, around the same time, so uh, the fall equinox. So these are a shift, of course, in uh, the northern hemisphere is different than the south, and we're going into that, you know, season where fall and winter is coming, and um, if we are in the northern hemisphere, and of course, vice versa in the south. So. For you guys, Aries, this in particular means that you are focusing more upon your relationships with others indeed, whether this be business clients, whether this be your partner, your marital partner, any kind of relationship. There will be attention upon how verbally you can sort things out in conversations. Um, and of course, as, as uh, these two planets enter into Libra, they will be in opposition to Chiron. So during this time, there can be a tension of some sort where you feel like your wounds are coming up and they're being, being reflected in your partner. And um, try not to overreact too fast by saying something, release judgment about the other person and take responsibility for your own feelings so that you don't blame others for feeling bad, but try to find out what it is inside of you that you can change. That is a very good idea. So the second sign of the week is the full moon in Aries. That's actually my sign. <laughs> and uh, the full moon in Aries is special because uh, this is the culmination of something that has started half a year ago when we had the new moon in Aries. So whatever you did in this area of your chart that uh, you initiated and yet, yet that you worked to improve and to put in energy, enthusiasm, fire, dynamic power um, half a year ago and up until now is going to show its result now. And. Um, this full moon is going on very close to uh, uh, Chiron, actually, only one degree away, which is also in Aries. So we have the Sun in Libra, and the beginning degrees of Libra. We have uh, the Moon in Aries uh, along with Chiron, and this is squaring Saturn up there in Capricorn. So this is an, a very interesting combination because uh, we are having to do with cardinal signs and cardinal signs are all about initiating something, striving for something, you know, because we have the areas of uh, energy where we are striving for something we want to achieve, something we want to, and, and you have to use your intuition about also what is this about in your life? What is it that you really want, where you want to assert yourself, strive for it and and start it out, start something new, also because it's in the beginning degrees. At the same time as it's in Aries, it's us overcoming some old paradigm, some old energy, some old energy, starting on a new, and Capricorn being the structures of our society, the structures of our lives, and Libra being other people, Chiron, uh, uh, any relationship, Chiron, that, that reflects these things, and Chiron being in, in uh, the sign of uh, the identity sign of me. Where are you wounded in this? I think there are mosquitoes starting to come in and bite me. <laughs> Aggressive like moss. Um, winter mosquitoes, we call them here in Denmark. But anyways, you have to re-examine the thing, just a second, let me just do one thing because I don't want to be eaten by the mosquitoes alive here, so I'm just closing a door. All right, so what we, <laughs> sorry for that, so what we need now with this full moon is to re-examine the context, 
in which we are striving so that we can pa push past these old paradigms. And since it's about Aries, it's of course about the fiery, intense energy about me, because in Aries it's about I am, this is me. Uh, but since we have Libra activated, it's not only about me, it's also you in the context of other people, other people reflecting you. Who are you without someone else, you know? So of course this is, how can I put this? Yeah, I know, I know. The w one of the best ways to describe this is we live in an objectified world. This is, this is the old paradigm. So it's, we used to always consider things as, uh, okay, this object we have, uh, I, I want to have this, I want to be that. It's always, it has always been about something outside of ourselves that we objectify in one way or the other. This is my boyfriend, this is my girlfriend, this is what I have, this is what I am. Uh, and through this objectification of everything, we lose the actual contact with other people. This is very important, what I'm saying now. So we need to go in and be there instead of objectifying things so much in our heads then meet other people where they are. The sun in Libra in relationship signs. New structures being made in this society that used to be so only about objectifying everything around us. Then try to be in it. Let us make this new structure of society, new paradigm about us actually really connecting Jupiter and Scorpio. Venus and Scorpio, the rule of Libra is in Scorpio. If you dare to be constantly in your heart instead of outside categorizing everything, but living at 100% present in the moment, then you can manifest what it is that you really want. And we all know that the Lamborghini itself is not going to make you happy. It's fun, yes. I'm not saying you shouldn't wish for it. But you won't find the true happiness before you feel inside of you what it is you want instead of all the objectifications and the ideas we get about what it is that we want and feel what is it you want. And this full moon is about the me in context with other people. And we can manifest what we are. So if you're still hanging around in an atmosphere, of some idea instead of who you really are. If you stay in that, then you manifest that which you really want and you fulfill your dreams. And actually we also have the north node of the moon in Leo, which is about this following your heart. And of course it's King Kong's thing up there to, to Saturn in Capricorn. And a King Kong's is always like, uh, we are not in the same mo modality and we are not in the same uh, element either. So of course Saturn and the North Node wants two different things. But they can go along because North Node wants to, you to follow your heart now. It's the late, last degrees of that. And Saturn wants to restructure society, so let them work together. Saturn just has to accept the chaos, in his opinion, what can, can seem like chaos, um, so that the heart can get space enough. So that conflict you can meet, of course, within yourself while you're doing it. To say it shortly, put it in short terms. If you want your world to change, there's only one way of changing it and that is through you changing yourself if you want your relationships to change you have to change period stop focusing so much about what others should do or shouldn't do and lift your fingers point your fingers Change yourself and see what happens. If you change, good things will come and start expecting the worst. No, the best, of course.
start expecting the best. Sign number three of this week is Venus again. She's now in Scorpio. And I just have one question for you. Where were you exactly to the date last, no, eight years ago? In 2010, where were you? Around this time, almost to the date. Venus is retrograding from the 5th of October to the, I'm sorry for scratching my nose, from the 5th of October to the 15th of November. She's, a, she's the grand theme, I know. We are talking a lot about relationships here. And this is the actual retrograde phase. And you know, as I usually say, it goes forward, backwards, forward. This cycle that we're in puts such an emphasis upon Venus's role. She's retrograding for 40 days and 40 nights. I just love that sentence. <laughs> just to, to be able to say it. And um, I will later make a program about when she goes from being a and evening stars are being a morning star, etc. But we need to focus upon the effects in our lives in these programs. Otherwise, people will get tired of the actual astrology talk. So the thing is that often when we go these eight years back, which is how long a Venus star or cycle takes to go back to the same place in the zodiac, you can look eight years back in your life, and 16 years, and 24 years, and etc, etc, etc. And you can look for if something similar to what's going on in your life now is happening. But you have to know that it doesn't have to be exactly the same. You have to know a little bit about the more psychological part of it to see the similarities of patterns, even though it's not the same story. But sometimes it can actually be the exact opposite also but it's still within the same theme. For example, for me, eight years ago, I quit the longest relationship of my life, which was with my musical partner during 11 years. We became friends instead. Actually, we were friends for a long time also before, of course, but that was a radical change because we thought we were gonna be together for a lifetime. For me now, it's the same theme, exactly the same theme, except from the opposite is kind of happening. And then you can say, but didn't you know, don't you, don't you know your partner through the last uh, one and a half to two years? And I'm like, yeah, but not to go too deep into it, but we were both in divorce situations and the actual start start of this relationship Will, won't probably be after January. We have been living together, of course, but a lot of old purging from old relationship, uh, working, uh, he's spiritual just like me, very open to everything, and he's been meditating for 26 years, doesn't eat meat, doesn't, you know, has a really, really good heart vibration. He's amazing. Uh, he's a diplomat. Um, so he has had to take care of his kids and the divorce, etc. I've had to let go of different things that I've brought along for my relationship, etc. So we are actually starting again. I don't mean to go too deep into that. Whereas for eight years ago, I was ending something with the same, it was the same themes, but it was the opposite, you know, but it was, that was on the table, that was on the, on the schedule. And I had to let go of also tendencies within myself, things that I am not good at. I also have to do that now in order to change. Once again, I'm in a situation where I can see, okay, you need to change this pattern in your relationship. Ships, not just to my partner, in general, to everyone. For example, for me, I'm very bad at, but I'm getting very good at it actually. But I used to be very bad at feeling where am I? I'm Libra, ascendant, last degree. So, uh, between Libra and, and, and Scorpio, but still on the Libra side. So I tend to always feel what the others want, even though I'm an Aries, and never really think about myself because my parents would always be, it, it's a lot of Virgo and, and Libra that's pleasing, serving others, da, da, da. So I have that in my chart. So what I need to learn in relationships is to feel where I am 
and to feel to say just to be able to say no thank you when someone asks oh could you help me with this oh no not today without explaining for 11 years excusing myself instead of just saying no that is such an achievement for me and i have been terrible at that and that always leads to saying yes or uh, at the wrong time for 20 times and then try number 21 is where you held something back, I'm just like, no, you know, crazy. <laughs> so that is the whole point that um, we need to learn what we are bad at, what we got from our parents that is not serving us anymore because we, you got something. So if someone keeps telling you, you're bad at this, like you're too weak or you're too rigid or you're too this and that, this time you should listen to what people say around you. Maybe they're not pinpointing it exactly, but there's something, if they keep saying you something, there's something about this theme you need to look upon. I know that for myself. You need to listen at one point to the signs of the universe, you know. And then you have to imagine a solution. You have to be able to imagine a solution. Otherwise you can't create it. You have to imagine it, believe 100% in that it can happen, have some kind of a plan or something you can do whenever you want to fall uh, close to falling into the old trap. And then the solution will come. Another thing about relationship is this. I talked about the old paradigm and how it's all about us wanting something, you know. We always want a 117 different individual goals. This is what I want with my life. This is what I need. And this is how I objectify and see uh, the, my goals. And this is my economy. We don't share economy. Um, this is mine, and this is what I want, me, me, me. Because there's not this us and this common, trying to find the common uh, goals, you know, um, because there's too much mine and yours and separation. What do you think happens? Then we have all these separations, because we live separate lives, so of course we separate. This leads to isolation. If we want to unite, we need to open up to sharing ourselves, sharing our finances, sharing, sharing our feelings, sharing our lives with, you, with each other if we want to be able to bond closely. Instead of just always wanting, you know, control. I mean, you have to focus upon, uh, you manifest through focus, but you also need to let go of the need to control at the same time you focus upon what you want and then you give it up to the universe to, to, to manifest this for you. These are still signs of manifestation. Um, and of course, in order to clean up in our relationships, an upheaval is needed. So even though you're like, oh, I just don't want to go into another argument or another discussion about this topic because I'm so tired, can't we just be... Yeah, well, but you need to get the things up, what it is that you really want, the strong desires, Jupiter and Scorpio and now Venus there as well. You need to have it up on the table to find out if you actually match. Should you stay together or should you leave? And if your desires doesn't match, then you have to leave, you know. If the one person wants a shared economy and wants to marry you and want a baby and you want a life where you want to live as a bachelor, only see each other every now and then, and just, you know, whenever you have time, you two shouldn't be together. You have to find out if you want the same, and then have the courtesy to leave and to say it, courtesy towards yourself, and of course the other person. Because otherwise you will waste valuable time of your life where you could manifest better things for you on a soul level by being with someone that where you really don't want the same thing. Ooh, is that a mosquito? No. Well, first of all, if you really want to see if you have changed and you have, you're transcending, this you will only know in the moment where you are able to not have anger when someone says something to you, so no reaction. And not victimizing yourself. No reaction, no anger, and no victimization. When you can stay neutral is what I'm trying to say towards whatever comes. Then you have transcended what this relationship learned 
t taught you. Not to say that you're not supposed to be together, but then you know with yourself that what used to be a problem is now solved and has changed. For men, the Venus period is about what we, uh, Venus is about what we receive. You know, what, when we put out our, our hands like this and are able to receive f from life in general as a man, it's uh, whatever you receive, if it's love, and people are like, yeah, of course I can receive love, but it's not all men who are able to do that. It's not all wom women at all who are able to do that. It has nothing to do with what, what sex you are. But when you're able to receive and not be in the dominant or the controlling role, then you have taught the Venus lessons, of course, with a balance. And as a woman, when you can receive neutrally without the reactions, then you have transcended. So sign number four of this week has something to do with Mars and Uranus. As I told you last week, we have yet another round of a square between the two. And this means, yeah, go figure, with Uranus in an Earth sign in Taurus. So much eruption, so much activity because of Mars, it's a square to Mars in the revolutionary sign of Aquarius. You know, so many things are going on. Like Mars is also fiery. So we have, what do you call, like large, uh, large uh, fires. There's been a lot of large fires all around, oh, not only this summer here in our part of the world, but also in the United States and uh, still going on. And we have a lot of earthquakes. Like for example, because I live in Tokyo also, I have, um, I have this program that can show me every time there's an earthquake in Tokyo. And there's, even though I'm in Denmark right now, I can see where my family is and they are having so many earthquakes these days, like crazy. So earthquake after earthquake after earthquake, and that's not only Japan, all over the world. The earth is responding. We have earthquake. We just had an earthquake in Denmark. We don't have a continental plate zone in Denmark. But they have discovered that there are zones so deeply down in the, in the earth, below the continental plates, that can also cause uh, eruptions, but only if they are really strong. The earth is, is really responding now. She is trying to dissolve the tension that is there. And I'm also seeing this connected to the lack of yin energy and the feminine side of our in our society, Venus, and the, the things going on in, in the Cancer, and the Venus, the whole Venus story of the shadow phase, but also that we are having the North Node moving into Cancer soon enough. This has got something to do with the feminine, the Earth, the Mother Earth is saying, no way, please stop. She is responding, she is reacting strongly. And she's calling upon us to change, to respect the feminine sides of our nature, of her nature. Signo numero 4 de esta semana tiene que ver con Uranus. Uranus en, eh, Uranus en Tauro, un signo de tierra, y Marte y en Acuario, el signo de revolución. Y en Cuadrado la, la tercera vez, este hace mayo. Tantos erupciones de la, de la tierra han pasado, tantos fuegos, eh, que, 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 ¿cómo se llama cuando hay una fogata muy, muy, muy grande? grande ¿Cómo se llama? Bosques, eh, eh, también en ciudades, etc. Quemando. Quemar. Se llama quemar, ¿no? <risa> um, la, y eso es Marte, es fuego, por supuesto, pero, pero la tierra habla a nosotros. La, esa mujer, la tierra, no quiere más suprimiendo, eh, es, supri, es, eh, no quiere, quiere más estar suprimido, suprimida. Es como en nuestra sociedad, es exactamente lo mismo, que tenemos un, un um, paradigma 
un paradigma, um, una paradigma patriarcal. Y eso tiene que ver con los, todos los aspectos masculinos y no tiene que ver con mujeres y hombres tanto como que, porque también las mujeres toman esa de, de estar fuerte y de, de tener ah, éxito y mm, mm, de esa manera sin... Así que lo, las valo, los valores femeninas como intuición, intuición tiene que ver también con sentir su cuerpo, sen, sentir la tierra, respetar a sus límites, estar en el mundo de los sentimientos, de la fe, de la espiritualidad. Hay un, un, el, 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 no hay una, una eh, armonía es desequilibrada ahora misma y por eso ella está pff, haciendo terremotos y volcanes que están pff, pff, salpicando bolas de fuego y cosas así para, para llamar a, a, atención. ¡Hey, hey! Escuchas que tenéis que cambiar algo y para mí eso tiene que ver con Venus que ahora está en focus, ahora eh, una calidad femenina y a la vez que tenemos el no norte, no nodo norte que está acercando, acercándose a eh, cáncer, donde va a estar eh, después de noviembre durante un año y medio. Tenemos que subir nuestras, y no le importa si es, eres mujer o hombre, todo el mundo tenemos que respetar y subir las calidades femeninas. Y eso no tiene que ver con que las hombres, los hombres tienen que pintar las uñas o, o cosas así, nada. Tiene que ver con la capacidad de recibir, de estar abierta, de abrir su corazón, de usar su intuición, de estar suave, dulce, de sentir tu cuerpo respetar al cuerpo, oír, escuchar, en vez de siempre hablar, recibir información, recibir amor, recibir a la gente, en vez de siempre estar en control y dar, dar, dar. Eso es lo que quiere la Tierra ahora mismo. Así que, resemble a lo que pasa para la Tierra, pasa en nuestras vidas, nuestros, ahora mismo. En del fian på engelsk. So basically, this is the last round because it's the third time that the the iron square right it started in May June. And we passed it once before, and now we're passing it for the second time. We want closure. People want closure. And at the same time, for nearly a year, Mars has been in contact with the south node of the moon over and over and again. And this has something to do with the moments where you have felt defeated, you know, in your deep connections. So this defeat one made you want to connect, disconnect, connect, disconnect. You went back and forth, forth. Oh, you really wanted it? No, you didn't want it, you know, Aquarius. And, and um, with the south node here, it's been so, so rough, but Mars is in the story, that's why I'm mentioning it. And then the square to Uranus is like, no way, we stop it. So the square to Uranus is about re-signing contracts, you know, redoing, saying, no, okay, this contract is released. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Then you can write a new contract now, perhaps, because you dropped the old contract, been through a period, and then you can write the new contract. And with, with Uranus, it's always about the unexpected. And since it's Mars, it's like unexpected storms, thunderstorms, electrical storms, any kind of storms in your life between people, storms uh, in your personal lives, in your, in your uh, professional life, anything where, where this defeat is going on in your life yeah so after after this as i started this program by saying uh, we are in a space between breakdown breakthrough and ascension and after this 
we will ascend with a new consciousness, so don't worry, there's a goal to obtain. <laughs> worth obtaining and worth waiting for, worth fighting for, worth staying passive and receptive for. So, sign number five of this week is the card of the week. And um, finally, I'm sitting inside and I can just draw them here. I didn't start anything outside, I'm just able to do this. So card of the week for the Aries is As I said a million times, six of cups. I love this card. <laughs> of course, it's because I'm a romantic and I know it's about nostalgia, etc. But look, I mean, it depends on how you interpret it. It can be just some kind of nostalgic moment of sweetness, of romance, of just profound joy where you felt like, mm, this is sweet and nice and kind and loving and yeah, maybe you're reliving a memory, but it can also be that this is happening. Like living a little bit in a fairy tale land. And that finally something is given back to us after a long period of something. Some beautiful emotions are returned to us. <laughs> Wish you an awesome week. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next week, Aries. Remember. Don't follow trends, follow your heart and never give up on your dreams. It doesn't matter if they have come true yet or not, just keep on being as if they are. See you next week. There is